Hey there, Lickin' Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to another awesome lesson right here on Lickin' Riff in which I'm going to help you to develop thumb independence. I'm gonna walk you through exercises and we're gonna you know, ramp it up in difficulty as we go along. And hopefully, by the end of this lesson, you'll be able to say that your thumb movement and thumb playing is a little bit more automatic than it used to uh, be, than it used to be. Sentences need to be completed. So, um, sorry for the William Shatnerism. Sentences. Um, so, um, um, thumb independence, that had nothing to do with it, it was just a musical embellishment. Um, thumb independence um, calls for never paying attention to the thumb, just letting the thumb play. And for that you need to have the thumb thump out the beats. Right? Just beats on the fifth string. I said fifth. String. Feeling a little foolish today, I'm sorry. Just the beats. Take A minor. Now play A minor with the beats. Okay. You'll get tired of this very, very quickly, so play it between the beats. Okay, randomly. Play it between the beats, but sometimes play it with the beat. Okay? This should become a little bit challenging, okay? This exercise. Because this calls for a little bit of thumb independence. So do it slower if you need to. Do this until you succeed, okay? Because it's very, very important because this is where things start getting tricky, okay? So once you can add the chord completely at random while still maintaining a steady beat with your thumb, this is where you, uh, you can move on, okay? The moving on part would be to add an embellishment, okay? Hammer on or pull off, zero one on the second string with the chord. Okay. It should be messy, but your goal is to have the thumb Continuously thumping out beats, okay? Strict beats. Then you'd want to try a little bit of shuffle. Okay? Bum, ba, bum, ba, bum, ba, bum, ba, bum. And then once you're used to that, try the previous exercises by adding A minor first. And then once you're comfortable with that, between beats, with beats, and you can still maintain the shuffle beat, add embellishments. Okay, this may take you a while. Okay, I am breathing through the, the exercises because I'm showing you what you need to do, but this may take you a while. It can take, you know, from several days to even a month if you're taking your time with the exercises. But if you're doing the exercises every day, you should be able to start feeling the thumb go automatic in about a week or two, okay? If you're really putting your time into it. Don't stress it out, okay? D don't stress yourself out. Um, you can do the exercises for five minutes, you know, and then just 
go do something and then go back, pick up the guitar and do it for five more minutes. You don't have to do it for an hour. Um, then you'd want to start adding random notes out of the chord. Okay, so again, beats. Random notes, strings one, two, and three. Random. Try it with shuffle. This should be a little bit difficult. Okay? So, random notes. And then you can try uh, another set of, you know, set of notes, uh, any chord you like. For example, try A minor, G, and F, and see if you can do uh, the previous exercise with three chords. Okay. Okay. Keeping a steady beat with the chords, okay? Um, I had a little bit of trouble doing it right now because my thumb wanted to do Travis picking and I had to force it to stay in place, so <laughs> the result was a little bit dirty. I, I apologize, I had a lot of buzzing because I kept forcing my, my hand uh, because I'm pretty used to moving the thumb around. Um, and that should be your next exercise because if you can change chord and chords and keep the beat with your thumb, you're ready for anything you like. Uh, so you can go to the Travis Picking uh, video, the 20 beginner Travis Picking exercises and play Travis Picking now that your thumb is independent. Um, or you can take the beats and change bass strings. For example, if you're on F, you can play the beats on the sixth string, then the fifth string, then the fourth, you can try randomness with your thumb because now your thumb is keeping the beat so you can just randomly play the chord notes as long as the first beat is the original bass note of the chord. Okay, this should be really confusing at first because you'll focus on the thumb again. But if you've uh, gotten used to... can play um, melodies using the da, 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 da string beat with your thumb on string six and five. And then add the fourth string just at random to see if you can do it. This should take you a while. This last exercise should take you a while to feel convenient and uh, comfortable with. I have no idea, I can't give you an estimate on, on how long it will take you because uh, every guitar player has, uh, you know, different muscle memory timing. So um, this, uh, don't let this exercise get you frustrated because it can get you frustrated. Just take your time. If you don't succeed, just leave this exercise alone, come back to it later on once, uh, you know, once your thumb feels even more independent. So that's how you develop an independent uh, thumb. Uh, independent tongue? Um, what, what the heck? Um, so I know I can give you more exercises, for example, on how to uh, add bass notes before the bass, like... Okay? But this is not what this is about. This is not a bass note exercise uh, video. This is designed only for thumb independence. And once your thumb is independent, you can take it and do whatever you like with it and do the more complex ideas with bass lines, walking bass lines, um, bass transitions. I have plenty of bass stuff, guitar-related bass stuff um, here. Uh, check the playlists 
the soloing and finger, uh, the soloing and improvisation playlist um, in particular. So I'll see you the next lesson. Go independize your thumb. Bye for now. Enjoy.